Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the Hello World series of my Easy AT Assembly programming tutorials. In this series, we make just a very simple Hello World, and we also look at how to compile and run it on an emulator. Now, today we're looking at the TIE 84, and we're going to get this simple Hello World that you can see running here. It says Hello World, it says it twice, just so we could test the new line. And it says 324, and if you're wondering why it says 324, it means nothing. Um, what I do is I often put a couple of numbers at the end, and this is so that if I'm repeatedly recompiling my code, I can change the numbers and check that it's really recompiling and running correctly and I'm not still running an old version from some time before. So um, that's just a little trick, it might be worth bearing in mind. So today we're going to be running on this, this example on our emulator, we're going to compile it with the Spasm assembler and we're going to run it on this um, CMU emulator here. Now you can go to my website and download the build scripts. Um, I can't provide you with the ROMs for the emulator. You'll have to find your own, but we will discuss how to do it all. So let's go over to the source code and let's take a look at what we've used to create today's example. So here is the minimal example. It's a single self-contained file and we're not using the graphics mode this time. We're using the firmware functions, which isn't my preference, but to, for the minimal example, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we are going to create an 8xp file, which is the um, executable binary file for the TIE 84 calculator. And I suppose one thing I should point out at this stage is uh, the rotters at TIE, uh, Texas Instruments, they changed the um, firmware. So the newer versions of the calculator can't run assembly because they are mean. So if you are um, amazed by this tutorial, don't immediately go out and work by a TIE 84 calculator because you might not be able to run it. Please uh, check online first and do some research. You will need to downgrade your operating system if it's even possible for you before you can run this on real hardware. Uh, I do have an older calculator before they made the change, but as I say, don't just make sure you don't buy real hardware and waste your money because uh, unfortunately it did change. Anyway, so the start of our cartridge, our cartridge needs to run, our program, sorry, not cartridge, it runs from RAM. The, it needs to run from RAM at D1 a881, but we need to put a two byte header at the start of this. So we've got a calculation subtracting two from that starting running address here to get the correct address for our program to start. And we start in easy 80 mode. We, we start in full 24 bit mode here. So that's what we're doing there. The two byte key that we need to put at the start of the file to define the 8xp file that will satisfy the software, uh, the C, the TIE calculator software that is, we put in EF7B, that is the header, and then our program just starts off as, as after that straight away. Now, the TIE calculator uses the IY registers as part of the firmware. Now, I'm not actually using them here, but just for safety, I'm backing it up here at the start, restoring it at the end here. And at the end of our cartridge, we are just reading in a key so that we can see everything on the screen. We're using the get key function here, which is at 020D8C here. So that will just read in a key. We don't do anything with it. We just then return. Once we return, if we just wake up our calculator here, if we just press a key here, you'll see that we get this done message um, and then the flashing cursor here after the program's finished. So just so that that doesn't corrupt what we're seeing, we're reading in a key before we return. At the start of our program, what we're doing here is we are running the clear screen routine at 020810. That's the clear screen function here. Uh, that doesn't actually reset the text cursor position. So being as we're using the text cursor, we need to reset that and we use 020828, which is home up. That sets the cursor back to the start. Now, we've got the print string routine here. I write my own print string routine in all of my tutorials. It uses character 255 termination. So we're just repeatedly reading in characters from the memory address HL until we get a 255 and we're passing them to a print char routine. Now, in some cases, I write my own print char routine. In this case, uh, we don't need to. We're just using the firmware one. So the firmware print character routine is called put C and that is at 0207B8 here. So that we're just defining by as a symbol as print char. A new line to move down a line is at 0207F0. So that's the new line command. These are all part of a jump block. So basically a set of um, addresses at the start of the operating system. I don't believe these move around between versions of the operating system. I think they're constant addresses. That's my understanding. So I don't think that this is a, an operating system version specific program here, but um, I can't say for sure. As I say, my general preference is to always go straight to hardware. And I've got bitmap examples that te draw text to the screen using my own font and we get nicer, smaller fonts as well. So we can use high resolutions. So as I say, this is the very minimal example here today. 
So that's how we're getting our characters to the screen, uh, screen and we're extending that to a print string. And so all we need to do is load our address of our message we want to show to the screen and use print string to do that. We're showing it twice just so we can test the new line function. And here is the string down here. So that is our minimal program, very simple here. Um, how do we actually compile it? Well, I went, have a batch file. I press, if I just terminate that, if I press F6, I have this automatic running script here and we run the batch file here and we also automatically pass the, the program that I want to compile, which in this case is basic hello.asm. So what does that script actually do? Well, um, not too much really. Basically, we're using the spasm assembler. If you need to get that, you can go to my website. There is a link on my website to download it. If you search for spasm and assembler, you should find it anyway. But um, basically, I am using that and we're specifying a couple of options. Now, we're running from a batch file. So percent one here is effectively the um, basic hello.asm file here. So that is the source file. We're specifying a destination. I'm specifying prog.8xp. The example today will compile straight to the kind of data that the calculator emulator needs. Um, so it's a file that is valid for the calculator. And I've actually run um, programs in the past on the real calculator. So it's it's already in the correct binary format. We don't need any kind of conversion program for the TIE84, which is quite nice. Now, there are two other things we're specifying. We're specifying this minus E switch that specifies easy 80 mode, which we will want for this system. And the T switch is specifying to output a listing file. Listing files you don't need, but they are debugging information. So I would suggest you, could, you would get them if the assembler you're using can provide them. So that's what this line is doing here, just building our source assembly into a binary file for our calculator. Now you'll see I've got a couple of other weird things going on here where you don't need these. What I'm doing is basically I'm restoring the settings of the um, calculator and also an image of the memory. This is so that every time I run my calculator emulator, it starts in the same position. You don't need to do this though. You can um, you can do things however you want really if you're writing your own scripts. So don't, you don't need to worry about that, but that's what it's doing. Now I start the program automatically from the command line. I'm using the emulator CMU. I'm specifying my ROM file here with minus R here, and I'm specifying the config file here. I'm specifying it with the G switch here, so I'm specifying it on the current drive. I think it saves to the my documents or the app profile otherwise, so I try and get everything onto the, onto the drive so that it's all self-contained, and I'm specifying to load into memory the program 8XP here. So that is being loaded straight into memory here. So that is enough to get the program to, to load into memory if I just stop my emulator here and I run again. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to run it automatically, but fortunately, it's not too hard. So the program has been loaded into memory here, but you can see nothing's going on yet. So I just need to click the program button here. And then I just press my down key on my keyboard and hit enter to run the prog and then hit enter again. And that is the example running there. So uh, a few manual key presses, but very quick, no problem there. Now, if for some reason you didn't want to use the command line on this system here, what you can do is you can just go to your your destination where you've built the program. So this prog 8 xp here, and if we drag it here, you'll see you've got archive, which isn't the runnable programs or the RAM. And so we just drag it into RAM here. Uh, I actually get a transfer warning, but I don't think that matters. So we just click OK there. And that has loaded it into memory. And then we can just run again. So there we go. So if you, for some reason, I don't know why you would want to, but if you wanted to load it in manually, that was how you would do it. But I definitely suggest you use the use some kind of batch file. If not mine, write your own. I'm sure you can do just as good a job as I can. Now, just as an extra bonus, not particularly useful, but I always do this. Um, I have some simple monitor tools that I use for my debugging, a simple um, a monitor which shows the contents of the registers and a mem dump function which dumps part of the memory to the screen. Now, these will work on any system that have the print char and the new line commands, which is why I've created those. However, um, they're not entirely useful on this system because of the screen resolution. They're far more useful on my example that has its own bitmap font. I couldn't find a way of lowering the font resolution unfortunately so you can see it doesn't entirely fit on the screen here but it does run so uh, a, a proof of concept if you will but the monitor will show the contents of the registers as you can see just here and the mem dump will dump a memory address and it will dump eight bytes and you can see that here i couldn't get any more on the screen so as i say um it works which is the purpose of it but not 
entirely useful so as I say if you want to if you need it there it is it's there for you to have um, if you really want to do proper testing with these and you test some of the harder functions and use the memdump or the monitor to see them I'd suggest use the bitmap fonts in the other examples anyway as I always say you're welcome to go to my website download the build scripts and download the source files and you use them in any way you benefit from it so they're there for you to use so you you can use them in your own projects in any way that you want Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this today. If you have, please like and subscribe. If you like the videos, YouTube recommends them to other people. And if you subscribe, I feel inclined to make more videos. So you might get some more Ty84 coming down the line. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.